Hello Blendheads, my name is Noel Belich and, and I am speaking to you from Buenos Aires, Argentina. This is one of a few videos that cover several tips that may come handy during the production of game assets or textures. These techniques in particular were used at the first game that I have worked for, a little game for mobile devices done inside Unity. You can find a link to download it at the description below. Uh, in this particular video, we are going to see how to use uh, vector uh, vector layers inside Krita. Why vector layers? Well, if you see this texture from the game, uh, this is the <coughs> texture for the main uh, um, buildings at the main buildings. <laughs> I can remember where at the, for at the at the foreground. There we are. There we go. And this is done using um, vector layers and a filter layer here to give it some attitude. But mainly vector layers because uh, it's based on patterns. And I'm going to show you that right away. To have um, a global view of this texture, you can see here. <clears throat> the main color uh, color pass, then amino mean occlusion, some dirt and dust painted here and there, mostly there. Other stuff that <clears throat> that um, cover for the door. Painted inside inside Blender, and well, a pattern from Krita that give it, give it uh, a more interesting look, and then at the end, the brick texture that has also a mask to clip out windows and some decorations like this one um, okay now I'm going to turn off this layer and this layer here and we're going to use create a new vector layer to start uh, the bricks um, thing all over again at the new layers um, button we select vector layer of course, it's going to be inside the, the group, so I'm going to take it out. There we go. And here we have our vector layer. Um, what's the main difference uh, in this vector layer with other layers? Well, the difference is that you can use uh, the brush to paint. You will see that the brush is uh, frozen. And you have to use a square and circle or vectorial tools to generate lines that also if we can if we select it are vectorial vectorial lines okay Whoopa. that was tough let's go to select the square and try to do a square thing as you can see, uh, here we have a square uh, box, obvious, but it's what it is. And at the tool options that this usually is uh, up here, but I changed it because of the video <coughs> used to clip this area that was important to show. You can select if you want uh, the box filled with pattern for uh, with that pattern with a color or or something else, or if you want to the outline be um, the outline be um, outlined using the brush that we have at the moment of of creating the and the <coughs> the shape. Uh, in this case, it's not very important because we are going to tweak all that. Once we are in the vector layer, we have to be aware that we can have many shapes. Okay. 
and all these shapes I are independent from each other, but uh, all the all the shapes um, are stored in the same vector layer. Uh, in this case, to be a bit more um, uh, to keep the, the things a bit more tidy, um, it could be a recommended a, rec a recommend. It would be recommended to generate several vector layers to have the shapes uh, more or less in order because this could be some sort of difficult to select and work when you have many overlapped shapes like this is could be it really can turn things in a mess really really quickly as you can see there uh, I <laughs> erased the one that I was working with but okay continue with this the uh, with this thing of the vector shape I have here up there the the cursor to select text pattern editing that we are going to see this in a second um, calligraphy tool I don't remember ah, gradient, gradient editing in case if we are filling this with a gradient we can edit the gradient using this interesting and then this last one is to edit the knots of the Bessier uh, point of the curve. In this case you can see that there is only one point and this is because this square is a parametric shape we can say if we can call it in a way and that allowed us to use this option that is simple chamfer borders or not. If you, ch if you want to turn this into something more editable you can add the tool options convert this to path and then you have a path to be edited. I'm going to convert this up into a path and I'm going to take this right here to look some more things. Well now I'm going to select the the shape and I should have here There we go. Ah, uh, by the way, I am using a developer version of Krita that you can download from krita.org. So may, some things may change, and some things um, probably be fixed on the next uh, uh, next release. I just want to <laughs> that you we be aware of. I'm going to leave the download to uh, the link to download it at the box below. I'm going to take out the the gradient and just to be uh, to do a quick uh, uh, to do a quick overview of these tools alignment center of geometry okay type of line and um, you may not see probably uh, out there Or no, or not line, no line at all. If you want to fill it with something, that we're going to take this in a second, and <laughs> also have a drop shadow options. Unfortunately, this is not available for um, a standard layers. It's only a, the drop shadow is only for vector layers, but <coughs> it is here and it looks quite nice. We're going to see in a few moments uh, when layer styles are merged, actually developed for Krita, thanks to the Kickstarters. Uh, maybe we have the same drop shadow for interactive drop shadow because there's an option for to do a drop shadow. Uh, the same inter interactive drop shadow for standard layers. Now I am going to cover um, more or less the entire area where I want to have um, bricks and I want to and I'm going to select 
a pattern. Um, thanks to uh, probably uh, probably a bug in Krita, I had to create, I had to generate two uh, different brick textures. I'm sorry for this. I trying to. I am trying to. Uh, I am trying to align the tools in the right way. I had to select. Uh, I had to create uh, two different texture bricks, one horizontal and one vertical, because when I uh, rotated the shape to align with the orientation that I have to use, I saved and closed the Krita, reopened the file, and the orientation was uh, reset. That also be also is probably a bug, but as I said, I am using a developer version, so uh, I have to deal with that, and so I created two different textures. Um, a quick fix, it doesn't take too much time to do it. Now we have our vector <coughs> vector shape with a pattern uh, filling, filling it. How do we edit this? Well, we have to go here and select text tool, no, <laughs> pattern editing. And pattern editing uh, enable us to us this blue box with two red points. One is to, to change the scale and the shape and actually the scale that you can see here, part of pattern size of the pattern. The other one is to change the origin of our pattern. Alright. Now I'm going to change, there we go. Here you can um, open your <coughs> custom image and load it into Krita and then you have it, uh, your custom pattern. It's not uh, exact, exactly a, a rocket science, it's quite simple. Open, load, and there you are. By the way, uh, this pattern was done using the technique that I, descript, um, I described in a video of the, this same series, uh, probably the first, but you can see how do this kind of pattern uh, on that video. More or less, it's this is all. There you have. If you want to, the original size of the of the image, the original um, aspect of the image, not size. Or if you want to have, if you if you have uh, any preference about the origin of, of the image to be placed. Once the size is more or less adapted. There you want to turn, or at least I want to turn this to a multiply blending mode. Lower the opacity. Maybe change a bit the size. And we are almost almost done. The only thing that I need to do is to take out the bricks from the window. And for that we're going to select the layer, the vector layer, right click and transparency mask. This will create and uh, this second layer down here, connected with our vector layer. And this is a standard layer, a standard paint layer. We're going to paint with black. Uh, there is a tiny, tiny tiny point there that you probably won't see at the, at the video but there you go black is transparent um, white is what you see so I'm going to take my square and I'm going to do a square on the window nothing happens that's why we have to say to the, sh to the tool foreground color which is black now I'm going to do this uh, square uh, I'm going to click and drag to generate a square box and 
there you go, our, our um, fill box. Once again, this transparency layer is a standard bitmap uh, layer to paint on. So even when I use in the same uh, shape, uh, square shape that I use on the vector layer, here is only to here only it's going to paint uh, pixels, not uh, leave any vector shape that we can edit. Um, well, from down here is just decoration. Maybe we can change. I press there um, <coughs> X to change color. So I'm going to instead of do instead instead of doing black squares, I'm mean, I'm doing white squares. So I, as you can see there, black, white, black, white, and I start drawing. On probably I want to this be just yeah. a cloud, <clears throat> and this is it. This is vector layers and how did. I use patterns uh, to to do to help me with the texture of the baby's game. Um, I hope that this video would be useful for you and thanks for watching and bye.